thank God. Family, thank God for that wonderful selection. Worship the King, truly. That's our whole point for being here, isn't it? Our whole purpose is to not worship mammon, which is wealth or finance or or you get so caught up in the cares of this life, but it's to worship the King, it's to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. Recognizing this in the responsive reading for daily living is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then how even the Lord had it written in scripture that we have all these different aspects of ministry he said some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and of course teachers. Some call this the fivefold ministry. But all these ministerial gifts are given, the Bible says, for the, for the perfecting of the saints. That's you and I, the saints of God. Notice the perfecting of the saints is an active uh, is an active uh, endeavor, if you will, as opposed to some believe that you only get sainthood after you pass away and people that's left behind uh, anoint you with sainthood. But that's not scriptural, and we're going to go by the Bible. We're not going to go by anybody's uh, traditions or anybody's denominational thoughts or whatnot. Or, or their rules or whatever, their bylaws or whatever. What does the Bible say about them? The perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why all these ministerial gifts are given. And so sainthood is something we achieve in our lifetime, Evangelist Pauly. You, you can't wait for somebody to, to pass and some people get together and vote, decide and I'm not saying that to criticize any particular people of faith, but this is not what the Bible teaches. We're going to hold to what the Bible says. Amen? So, the perfecting of the saints. There's no perfection once you're dead. The perfecting of the saints, that means living beings. Amen? So we see that we achieve sainthood while we're here in this present world when we become the children of God. Amen. We become that royal priesthood. And we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. A joint heir. Isn't that amazing? A joint heir? That means everything he has, everything that he did, we can do. Everything he has, we can have. A joint heir. And one of the key things is understanding that we are in spiritual combat. Well, I said we were going to continue on in the topic of spiritual combat that we started. I'm going to go back to Ephesians, the sixth chapter again. But before we go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, I want to share this little scripture with you, this thought that shows you how important, <laughs> how important our weapons are. Amen? How important. Because Paul picked this up in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Where he starts off and says, at the beginning, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, in whose presence I am based among you, but being present and bold towards you, I beseech you that you not, I may not be bold when I'm present with confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as we walk according to the flesh. However, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. All right? We do not war after the flesh. We don't get caught up in fleshly things. Because why? Fourth verse is where I want to get. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let me break that down. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Are not carnal. Not physical. Are not worldly weapons. It would be something if we could just walk up and, and take demons and take folks that was demon possessed and off with them and 
we win a battle, but that's not the battle that we're given to. You can't walk up and just uh, smash up people like that. They call that assault and battery, and you go to jail for that. And you still have people that's demon-possessed and not serving God anyway, so you haven't accomplished anything. Our weapons have to be what? Spiritual. That's what we don't, when we get back over to Ephesians 6, chapter 10, verse, we talk about spiritual. Yes, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. But that's spiritual combat that we're dealing with. It's a battle for the mind, the heart, spiritual heart, the soul. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the Bible says, but what? Mighty through God. That means authorized, ordained, strengthened through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Mm. Do you realize strongholds, spiritual strongholds, are worse than physical strongholds? Spiritual strongholds. The Bible says our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty through God. Now, not mighty through Michael Bodie, Sharon Bodie, anything, but mighty through God. That's why we have to have the mind of Christ. That's why we have to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, because our weapons are not physical. Yes, we might have some physical training. We might have some physical abilities to, to, to take care of some business that may come up in a physical sense. But, but, but amazingly enough, even if you win a lot of physical fights, you still haven't changed that individual. You haven't, unless you get to that individual's mind, that heart, that soul, you just you just beating up on somebody, right? And that's not gonna get it done. That's not gonna get it done. We have to use God's weapons, which are spiritual, to pull down these spiritual strongholds. For Vitfer says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, let me stop here, everything, that's every pretension, every theory, every argument, every little prideful thing that men folk, women folk, that human beings can think of. The Bible says doing what, man? Just casting down these imaginations. I'm gonna throw in the theories, these arguments, all these things that people are coming up with. Because what's the problem in our lives? These things exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Now, we read earlier, but sanctification is something that happens while we're alive. You become saints of God. So how am I going to become a saint of God if I'm coming against the knowledge of God? No, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Become one of his saints? I have to acquire the knowledge of God. I have to seek after the mindset of Christ. Amen. I had to do this if I really want to be uh, get into true sainthood, which enables us to do what? Become redeemed, which enables us to do what? Have eternal life with our Lord. Yes. The saints of old, you say, I'm working on a building. Yeah. We're working on eternity. <laughs> I'm working on more just in the building. I'm working on having a place set aside. You know, some of us in the, spirit, in the, in the physical realm of day, we have vacation homes. We have time sales. We got this, that, and the other. So these are places you go to to relax and everything. But now we got a bigger thing we're working on here, Vance. We're working on where we're going for the long haul. It's not going to be a two-week deal here or one week there. You know how those things give you a week out of a year. Where are you going? What time is up? Where are you going when that day, your day, your day to leave here is upon you. What's your destination? What ticket are you going to have in your hand? Ticket to eternal life with our Lord or ticket to eternal damnation with Satan as demonic force? But the Bible says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ and having it in the readiness to revenge all disobedience 
when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, this describes warfare. This describes a warrior. Yes, Christian soldier. Christian warrior. Notice he started off and said, I'm meek and humble. But then Paul goes into that we have to be ready for spiritual combat. Casting out imaginations. Yes, I'm going to be a peaceful person. But when it comes to spiritual things, I have to be ready for combat. I have to be ready for combat. Let's go over here to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Well, I want to pick back up. Uh, my time is running short, but I want to at least get a couple more points in before next week. We go back, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let me stop here again. Everything comes back to how am I going to do this? How am I going to get this done? Well, it's in the Lord. How am, I going to get, how am I going to keep myself? You cannot keep yourself, but the Lord can keep you. The Lord can keep whatever you commit to him. It's the, the, the Lord operates on the principle that if you commit to him, if you cast your cares upon him, whatever you do, he will deal with it. He'll handle it. He'll take care of it. Don't you know that the Lord is the ultimate guardian? Amen. Amen. That the Lord would take care of whatever the situation. That's what guardians do. Guardians take care of situations. Amen? Amen. And so the ultimate guardian is our Lord. Be strong in his power, his might. Don't worry about how you're going to keep yourself saved. How you're going to keep yourself from the hand of every. So if you commit yourself, then he's faithful to keep you uh, sealed to the day of redemption. Amen. But you have to want to be kept. You have to be strong in his power. Don't get an arrogant spirit that many get that says, well, I'm this. I'm this great person. I'm this. You are nothing but flesh and bones. Let me tell you, friend, just because God gives you gifts and God gives you anointing, and, God, as, and we see in Scripture God gives everyone a measure of faith. Because God has dealt mercifully with you. Don't get it wrong that now you're equal to God. Don't get it wrong now that you operate in your own strength. Don't get it said that you're just a great person to be worshipped by folks or to be uh, raised up as somebody that's special. No, 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 no. We still have to stay meek and humble, recognize we are God's property. We are God's children. And all the glory goes to God. Don't you dare, and I'm talking about whatever preacher you are or whoever you are, don't steal God's glory. Don't take it. Don't get in front of God. You always look, serve God first. Lord, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I take no credit for the things that you're allowing me to do. The blessings that you're pouring on me, the blessings that you uh, have to overtake me, I'm not going to take credit for it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to thank you. That's why we say, thank you, Jesus. You know, a lot of people want to say, why y'all? I say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when you learn to thank the Lord, you can't help but get happy. And especially when you know that name Jesus is unique. There's no other name by which man can be saved. That's scripture. Listen. I know some ministers and uh, are good at speaking Greek and all the translation and you know they talk about Christos and all that. That's great, but I'm old-fashioned. There's nothing like that name, Jesus. Hallelujah! Say Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did, and I'm grateful. And I'm going to serve you to the best of my ability. I'm going to commit my way to you. That's how we're strong in the Lord. Other than that, do you put your little fist up? Put the. Sometimes I tell, I see little students around their schoolhouse. Put that. I say, put your hands down, boy, like you know how to fight. You don't know what you do. I can see where you stand. You don't even know how to fight. Put your hands down. Oh, I bet you ain't been trained by nobody. Put your hands down. Go to class. People putting their hands up like you like you know what you're doing. Put your hands down. You know? Come on, get the Lord, friends, family. 
Get the Lord and watch the Lord fight your battles. It should be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You know, when we have the Lord's might on our behalf, we're incredible. Bishop Bowley, I only use the word awesome to one entity. Now, you do you. But this bishop here, I only use the word awesome to describe the things of God. And that's my personal philosophy. Everybody can walk in their own philosophy, however you do it, but only God is awesome. We used to sing the song, didn't we, Vaz? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Y'all know the song. Now, y'all know me. I can't get all the words together, so you just have to go ahead and work with Bishop because I'm a musician, so I'm trying to hum the bass guitar parts on these things. And my wife always made fun down the years. said, what, what are you trying to say? But now I've got to, we've been married long enough, she can kind of pick out what I'm trying to get out there. So thank God for the help me to finally figure me out after all these years. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for a wonderful, wonderful help me here. Anyway, <laughs> but I only, I only apply awesome to God. That's me personal. Now you, however you want to do is fine, but this one right here, God is awesome. God is awesome. And so, uh, continuing on, finally, and you know the interesting thing about this chapter here, at the beginning of the chapter, he's going over Christian duties and marriage and parents and children. And then it's interesting, he gets down to the 10th verse, and finally, after I told you all how to do that, be strong in the Lord and the powers of might. Now I'm telling you how to be a Christian warrior, a Christian soldier. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be a stand, stand against the wiles of the devil. The whole armor. Okay, what does that mean? It's very important, family, that you don't leave any parts off. He says the whole armor. Here's why you need the whole armor. If you don't have the whole armor, that means that there's some part that's unprotected. There's some piece of you that's unprotected. And remember, an unprotected piece can be injured. An unprotected portion of you can be uh, harmed. It can uh, be, uh, it, it can turn into something that would take down a whole body. Remember, only a little bit of leaven can ruin a whole loaf. Have you ever noticed how when something goes moldy in your fruit or something, how a couple of bad grapes or a uh, bad apple will mess the whole thing up in a short time, not very long, in a short time. And so that's why we had to have the whole armor. Vance, we had to be fully equipped. Now we're gonna talk about the equipment, but we had to be fully equipped. Why? Because we need to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice, it's very interesting that the word wiles was chosen here. And it's very interesting because it's letting you know our adversary, Lucifer, Satan, whatever you want to call him, is very wily. What does that mean, preacher? Very tricky, very crafty, <laughs> very slick. You know, a lot of times we will see uh, little animals that are wily, and, you know, the coyote is known for being an especially smart critter because it, it, it's got the characteristics of a cat and dog. You know, smart like dog, but can move like a cat, quiet. And then some of these dogs, you know, around here try to be so slick, they look you off when they know they're gonna to want to steal your food, and they kind of look you away and have you thinking, oh, that dog ain't thinking about this. That's a wily character. Did you all know that? My daughter now got a wily dog around here, unashamedly wily. Just will just look you off. And everything, and you know, as soon as you turn your head, gone. <laughs> That's the way the devil is, family. The devil is just as wily, shrewd, tricky. We'll fool you. We'll look you off, and you thinking everything is good. <laughs> I thought the Bible said, "Be careful when you think about high and mighty. Look out, cause you about to get a fall." Because you know what the man is? The enemy got you looking off thinking, yeah, yeah, okay. I got that pride. Yeah, me, me. Stop being prideful. Remember, don't get in front of God. Do not get in front of God. Amen. Amen. Stick with God. Cast your cares upon him. 
<laughs> Let him be your ultimate guardian. So now you can be strong and in the power of God's might. Not your might, but God's might. You need that whole armor because you need to have all these pieces on. Nothing needs to be left to chance when it comes to the wily devil. Because that devil's going to find your weakness. You know that? Whatever's going on, the enemy is going to probe and probe and probe and find where you don't have coverage. And, 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 and the, the script, next verse says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm. That would be easy, wouldn't it? If we could just wrestle, my grandson's wrestling over here, they, you know, taking down fellas and whatnot, that would be great. A couple of us could go out here and wrestle the enemy and just save the world. Wouldn't that be incredible? Even then, somebody wouldn't be saving what they. That might be critical of that, right? So, but it doesn't work with that way. It doesn't work that way. We have to wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's, the Bible says not against flesh and blood, but against principal. Uh-oh. We're starting to get beyond physicalities now. We're starting to get into spiritual combat here. Spiritual items. And you know, one of the things is the devil always tries to attack the saints of God. The Lord knows that we need to earn incomes to feed our families, to have a place to stay, have transportation, basically the what we call the essentials of daily living. I mean, you know that if you put God first, the Lord will provide. Put him first, he'll put you in position to have the job you need. Put him first, he'll put you in position to have the home you need. Of the transportation you require but you need to put God first in everything you do but you know the Lord allows all this wildlife to be prosperous all over the world these birds and all this other wildlife that the wildlife can take care of itself don't you know that the Lord who we're made in his image is going to care about his people uh, amen Critters don't worship the Lord. Humans do. We are the ones that God is called for worship from. Amen. Well, we see we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That would be easy. But it's against principalities, powers, mm. rules of darkness of this world. Woo! This is bad stuff. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness everywhere. In essence, we're, we're, our adversary, the devil, is everywhere. Everywhere. There's no place you can't go. But brother preacher, is he on a job? You bet. Brother preacher, is he in a school court, a schoolhouse? You bet. Brother preacher, is he in my home? Mm-hmm. Brother preacher, is he in churches? Oh yeah. Do you realize the devil is sitting up in many churches a day, deceiving, right there? Because the Bible says, if possible, he tries to see the very elect of God. Does that mean, how is he going to try to see? He's going to be sitting up in church buildings. Notice I didn't say in the body of Christ. Make the distinction. Not the body of Christ. The devil can't see the body of Christ, but he can certainly sit up in a church building. Many times, sit up in a choir hall. Uh-oh, I don't know I'm going to get bad reviews on that. Oh, might even be in a pulpit somewhere. Spiritual wickedness. That's why the Bible says, know them that labor among you. And we need to try the spirit by the spirit. You need to have the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord will let you know when you're around other folks that have his spirit. Amen. That's why it's very important there's just so many reasons we've been talking about on why you need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. But it, it's just you can't really serve God. The Bible says without the Spirit of Him raised these from there, you're not in His. You're just not. You're not in the right army. You're not on the right payroll. You're not in the right company if you don't have the Lord's Spirit in you. you got to get it. You must have it. It's not hard to get. Really, you just need to ask for it. Because the Bible says he is a warder of them that diligently seek him. 
You know, God's not a stingy God. And it's not his will that any perish. Right? But he wants you to ask and come clean and say, yes, I'm a sinner. I came short. Uh, I need to make a change. I don't need to do a 360. I need to do a 180. Let's, let's tighten up the geometry, folks. Here. 360 is a circle. You don't want to come back where you start. You want to go semi so you want to go a different way. At least do 90 degrees. At least that's a different direction. 360, no, no, no. Be preferably 180, all right, diametrically opposed. But anyway, as I conclude, and we'll have to finish this to uh, continue next time, spiritual wickedness, high places. I'm going to break down what each part of your weaponry means. But keep in mind, all of it is important. We do break down what each part covers. The scripture does a fabulous job, this chapter here, these next few verses, I'm going to break down what each part covers. But if you notice, it started here as what? Put on the whole armor. So as I, over the next Sunday, break down all the different parts and make sure that each part's covered, in the conclusion of matter, you still need all of it. You still need all of it. But I want to make sure you understand why each part is necessary, why you need the helmet, why you need the belt, mm -hmm. why you need the breastplate. All these parts are important. But the bottom line is, 11 and 13 says, take unto you the whole arm of God. Uh, in 11 it says, you can stand the wiles of the devil. And at 13, you may be able to stand in that evil day and haven't done all to stand. You know, you can feel good about combat when you've done everything you can to stand. When you put all your all, and in fact, I'll tell you this, in any human endeavor, when you've done your best, that's all you can give is your best. If somebody came out better, well, okay, but I gave my best, the problem that you will have it's if you did not give your best, and you know you didn't give your best, then you're gonna be you're gonna be miserable because you know you're gonna come back and be tortured and say, well, you know, I could have done better, I could have done this, I could, I could, I could have, could have, could have, could have, could have, but you did not. Never leave anything undone, family. Don't leave anything undone. Let's put this whole armor on. I'm going to continue on next week. You put your whole arm of God on. Be dressed. I know I have a couple of family here in the military, one in the Air Force, one in the Marine Corps. They, the United States military provides them what they need for combat. And why is that? Because the United States of America wants its airmen, its Marines, soldiers, sailors ready to be the best they can be to face any adversary of the United States of America. Therefore, the United States of America ensures that we have the best that we can come up with. Other people might have good stuff, might be equal, but we believe our fighting jets are the best. We believe our naval ships are the best. We certainly believe our trained warriors are the best trained, that they're going to get it done. What's the Marine said? A few good men. <laughs> Marine said, we don't even need all that. Just give us a few people with purpose. I sound like God's warriors there. Amen. It's curious enough, even when they was fighting in the Old Testament, at times, the Lord said, y'all got too many folks here. Go on, cut this down. Take some serious warriors with you. I don't know about you. I want to be in that number that the Lord is expecting to fight. But brother preacher, I'm a woman. Brother preacher, I'm a weak person. This is not physical. This fight is spiritual. You're going to be attacked. Come on, get strong. Let's exercise this word of God and get strong so we can be ready against the wiles of the enemy. He's coming after you on the job. Yes. Because he knows you know you need a job. And a lot of our problems happen because we work, what, eight hours, ten hours a day, most of us? 
So in a 24-hour cycle, the job is grabbing a lot of your attention. And a job, a school, if you're a student or teacher, that's a job. Uh, and then what else, what else do you spend time on? In your home, so sometimes a home life can be in tatters or upside down, relationship with, with spouses, you know, what, what have you. All these things the enemy are going to use to attack you. Family, the fight's on. I want you to be fully equipped with all the whole armor so you be ready for combat. Again, it's not physical. We certainly enjoy seeing grandson and them take people down, wrestle, get the trophies and all that. It's beautiful. But it's not physical. If it were that easy, we'd have had this thing fixed a long time ago. We could have got a bunch of boys together and we'd have handled some business. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's spiritual. But we can still handle business when we get together, united, as saints of God, and take down the enemy. Remember, what did I read to you in the sixth, uh, fourth chapter? I'm sorry, Corinthians. We read that the our weapons are not carnal, but what mighty to pull down strongholds. Mighty. So they're not carnal, but yet they're powerful, mighty. We just need to know what we're working with and know that we're operating with mighty weapons and use them wisely. In a physical sense, you would not give a six-month-old. In fact, you wouldn't give a six-year-old the same weapon that a grown Marine is running around with. Come on, somebody. That would be foolish, wouldn't it be? To put a weapon that a Marine or Airman has that's a grown person in the hands of a six-year-old. That's trouble. They have a great weapon but not know how to use it or use it wrongly, kill the wrong people. Well, same thing. We, as saints of God, have to know how to use our weaponry had to know how to fight this spiritual fight. And guess what? God's preparing us for it. And we're going to get through it. We're going to learn more about this armor. We're going to learn more about all the pieces that we need. And all of these things will come together with two things in your life. Faith and prayer. The Bible says praying with all supplication. That means humble prayer to God will put you in position to use your weapons effectively. Notice, I don't want to use my weapons to attack other saints. No, my job isn't to go around and beat up other children of God. Now, some people think they're doing God's work. That's not me. I'm here to preach the gospel and lead people to Christ and let the word show you where you weak. I'm not going to beat you with the tools the Lord's given me to beat the adversary because you are a fellow a soldier in the army of the Lord. I need you strong. I need you working with me. I need you in combat with me. I don't need to be committing, what do they call that? Fratricide? When you shoot another soldier? Friendly fire? Friendly fire? Nuh-uh. I don't want to hit you with friendly fire. If you're not where you're supposed to be, I want to encourage you. I want to triage you. I want to get you up to where you need to be so you can join the fight. We all in this together. Aren't we family? Say out there. We all in this together. I want you strong wherever you are. Whatever state you in, whatever nation, wherever you travel, wherever you are, God is there. And I want you to be the win. The spiritual fights, you have to fight. I may not always be able to be with you, but I can certainly be there with you in prayer. I can be with you in spirit. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we conclude another service, Lord, I'd ask you to touch the hearts and minds of the people this morning, Lord. Let them know this is a, a time to, to, to wake up and stay awake, not with worry about what the world is saying about woke or nothing, but we need to be woke in Christ. Thank you for waking up the saints today, letting them know that it's spiritual combat. No matter where it's on the job, in the home, or even in some church somewhere, we still have to fight this spiritual combat. And not only fight it, Lord, but fight it effectively, not to harm one another, 
but to help one another and beat back the spiritual wickedness that we're dealing with in high places. Lord, as we face another week, we don't know what we'll each and every one of us have to face, but I pray that you give us the strength to face each situation, each battle, uh, each encounter, whatever we have to deal with, Lord, that we go through and come through victorious. And Lord, even if we kind of stump our toe and, and slip, raise us back up, Lord, that we would learn that we can't give up. We have to get back into it. And then another day is another opportunity to do what you're leading us to do, what you're calling us to do. Lord, we're, we're thankful for those that's listening. Lord, we're thankful for those that's been supportive. Lord, as you continue leading us and guiding us, Lord, that we would do only your will. Lord, that we decrease. We have nothing but humble motives, which is to serve you and to spread you to the world. Lord, let us stay on course. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Look, as you go through it, and I, I keep telling everybody, I keep telling, as you face these things, these evil days that come up, don't meditate on them. We already told you previously, what was that vantage over in the fourth chapter of Philippians that focus on whatsoever things are lovely? Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4.8. Please keep focusing on Philippians 4.8. I know I sound like a broken record, but you need to. There's a reason the Lord keeps telling me to tell the saints to focus on Philippians 4 8. Let me go there real quick before we end. Make sure that you're focusing on this. Stop worrying about the bad things that seem to always pop up at the wrong time. Because Philippians 4 8 says, What? Fine. Here's another way he's finally. Have you done gone all? Have you done all, 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 all this? I like it when the Bible says finally. That's because there's a whole lot that went on before. Finally, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. Now, wait a minute. These things are all godly things. So what am I telling you to do? Focus on the godly things. Focus on the true, honest, just. These are all really matters of the heart. So you have to now start using your spiritual eyes. Like I'm teaching you how to use your spiritual weapons. Let's use your spiritual vision now. Your spiritual eyes now to focus on these things. Huh? Don't focus on the worldly things. Remember the analogy about Peter walking on the water? I remember we talked about that some while ago. Peter was doing fine as long as he kept his eye where? On Jesus. As soon as he listened to thunder, watched the lightning, and everything, he took his eyes on Jesus and began to drown, began to sink. But curious enough, he had made it close enough where Jesus could reach down and pick him up. So you were that close. You are. You were that close to your blessings. You're that close to where you need to be in Christ. But it's the average. What that, that, that wily devil, wily, is to get you off course, off balance. Have you meditate on the wrong thing? Meditate. And let me add one more scripture here for you to meditate on this week. Let me add one more scripture. Is that all right? Can I give you one more scripture, family? Psalm. First Psalm. I want to get to the second verse, but I'm going to read the start of the first. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Mm. Stop listening to ungodly counsel. Some of y'all be 100% better right there. You just cut out the ungodly counsel. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. What does that mean in the lifestyle of sinners? in the lifestyle, hanging around sinners, you know, just, just finding joy being among sinners, just finding joy being in that lifestyle. That's the way of sinners. 
uh, or another scripture says the path of sinners, but it's all the lifestyle, enjoying that. Nor sinneth in the seed of the scornful. But here's my verse here. I want you to meditate on this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. We're coming back to spiritual, godly things. And if his law doth he meditate day and night. Philippians 4 8, Psalm 1 2. You focus on these. Watch your week get better, better. I love this next verse because he said, then you should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, anything planted by the rivers, if you notice, when rivers go through and you have these lagoons and things where uh, you got trees and all these things next to water, those trees are real green, aren't they, man? They're real lush and everything. Yeah. That's why stuff like algae and stuff can hide up in there because it's real fertile. It's real productive. Now, the Bible's saying that's you child of God, that's you saying of God, that's you family when you meditate on his word we're going to continue on our spiritual weapons and combat, I want to get you ready you can't stop fighting now, the only time your fight ends is when you take your last breath until then you got to fight and fight but it's the Good fight of faith. God bless you. See you next week. See you next week.